Most people think cutting sugar is just about losing weight. But in medicine, we see something very different. After just 30 days, nearly every system in your body starts to reset. Your brain, your hormones, your skin, your sleep, even your mood all begin to shift in measurable ways. So in this video, I'll break down exactly what happens inside your body when you remove sugar for 30 days. What improves, what gets worse before it gets better, and what you can actually expect to feel. I'm Dr. Alex, I'm an emergency medicine doctor in the UK, and after nearly 10 years in the A&E, I've seen what happens when preventable disease isn't prevented. And my goal now is to help people like you avoid it in the first place and live longer, healthier lives. Let's start with some context. So the average person in the UK consumes around 60 grams of added sugar per day. That's about 14 teaspoons. In the US, that's closer to 77 grams, nearly 20 teaspoons daily. And most people don't even realize it because sugar hides everywhere. Your morning cereal might have 12 grams. That supposedly healthy granola bar, well, that's another 10. Even your pasta sauce has six to eight grams per serving. Now, I'm not talking about the natural sugars in fruit or the lactose in milk. Those come packaged with fiber, with vitamins and protein that slow down the absorption. I'm talking about refined and added sugars, the stuff that manufacturers pump into processed foods to make them taste better and keep you coming back. The reason this matters isn't just about calories. Sugar directly impacts how your body manages energy, controls inflammation, and regulates your focus. When you're constantly flooding your system with glucose spikes, you're creating a state of metabolic chaos. Your insulin levels stay elevated, your energy crashes, and your brain starts relying on short-term hits instead of sustained fuel. Over time, this creates insulin resistance, the precursor to type 2 diabetes, to cardiovascular disease, and even cognitive decline. You can't sustain deep focus when your blood sugar is on a roller coaster, no matter what you're trying to achieve in life. Now, just a quick one before we carry on with the video. I see messages and comments all the time from people who've watched a few videos but didn't realize they weren't actually subscribed. So would you mind doing me a quick favor and just double checking that you are? It's free, it takes a couple of seconds, and it really does help this channel keep making videos like this one and keep the whole thing moving in the right direction to help more people like you. And if you are subscribed, then thank you very much. You're not just watching, you're part of this story, and I really appreciate being on the journey with me. So the first seven days without sugar, what actually happens when you stop? And bear in mind, this video is aimed at those of us who eat lots and lots of refined or added sugar. Well, the first week is rough. And I want you to know this upfront because most people quit during this phase thinking that something's gone wrong. When it hasn't, your body is just adapting. Within the first 24 to 48 hours, you'll likely experience headaches. Not because sugar is detoxing out of your system, that's not how physiology works, but because your brain is recalibrating its dopamine receptors. Sugar triggers dopamine release in the same reward pathways as addictive substances. When you remove it, your brain temporarily struggles to generate motivation and pleasure from normal activities. So you might feel irritable, foggy, or unusually tired. Your gut microbiome also starts shifting during this time. The bacteria that thrive on sugar begin to die off, and they don't go quietly. They send signals to your brain that create intense cravings. This is a genuine biological response, not a lack of willpower. You're essentially starving out a population of microbes that have been running the show. On top of that, blood glucose fluctuations add to the discomforts. If you've been eating sugar regularly, then your body has become efficient at releasing insulin quickly. Now that the sugar's gone, your insulin response is still hair trigger, which can cause temporary dips in blood sugar that can feel like low energy or shakiness. This mirrors what happens when people try to pull back from chronic caffeine use. The system has adapted to a constant stimulus and withdrawal feels pretty awful. But it's not a failure. It's your body resetting to baseline and the discomfort is temporary. So day seven to 14, 
by the end of the first week, things start to stabilize. Your insulin sensitivity begins to improve, which means practically that your cells become better at using the glucose already in your bloodstream. You need less insulin to do the same job and your pancreas isn't working overtime anymore. As this happens, your blood glucose levels even out. Instead of spiking to nine or 10 millimoles per liter after meals and then crashing to four a few hours later, you're staying in a much tighter range, around 4.5 to 6.5 throughout the day. This translates directly into stable energy. No more 3 p.m. slump, no more desperate need to snack just to stay awake. Something else happens around this time as well. Your liver starts offloading stored fat. When insulin is constantly elevated, fat stays locked inside cells. As insulin drops and stabilizes, your body can finally access fat stores for energy. You might notice that your face looks a bit less puffy or your waistband feels a bit looser. That's not just water weight at this stage, it's visceral fat beginning to reduce. Along with this, inflammation markers drop throughout your body. C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, these are measurable signs of systemic inflammation and they begin declining after just 10 to 14 days without added sugar. Lower inflammation means better recovery from exercise, clearer skin, and reduced joint pain. Your sleep quality improves as well. Blood sugar crashes during the night, disrupts sleep and REM cycles. Once your glucose stays stable overnight, you spend more time in restorative sleep phases. You wake up feeling sharper, not groggy, and you'll notice better morning focus. Your brain isn't waiting for its first sugar hit to function. It's running on steady fuel from fat metabolism and stable glucose. This is the metabolic state that allows for deep, sustained focus on whatever matters to you. Okay, so moving on to days 14 to 21. Around week three, something shifts in your brain. The dopamine system recalibrates and your reward pathways, which had been hypersensitized to sugar, start responding normally again to everyday pleasures. A good conversation, completing a task, a walk outside. You stop chasing sugar highs and start engaging with real satisfaction again. A serotonin regulation improves as well at this point. And serotonin is your brain's mood stabilizer and it's largely produced in your gut. As your microbiome shifts toward beneficial bacteria, serotonin production becomes more consistent. You feel less reactive and more emotionally balanced. Motivation becomes intrinsic rather than dependent on external stimulation. Mental clarity sharpens during this phase too. Brain fog lifts. And this happens because glucose metabolism in the brain becomes more efficient and neuroinflammation decreases. Your hippocampus, which is the part of your brain responsible for memory and learning, functions better with stable glucose and lower inflammation. If you're learning anything new, whether it's a language, a skill, or preparing for something important, this is the window where you'll notice a cognitive upgrade. The hormonal benefits compound during this time as well. Cortisol, which is your primary stress hormone, begins to normalize. Chronic sugar intake keeps cortisol elevated because each glucose spike is interpreted by your body as a mild stressor. Lower cortisol means better stress resilience, improved sleep-wake rhythm, and more controlled appetite. Alongside this, leptin sensitivity improves. Now, leptin is the hormone that signals satiety. It tells your brain that you're full after eating. High sugar intake creates leptin resistance, which is why you can eat a massive meal and still want dessert. As leptin sensitivity returns, your appetite becomes more intuitive. You eat when you're hungry, you stop when you're full, and you don't obsess over food between meals. Your circadian rhythm stabilizes at this point as well. Sugar disrupts melatonin production and cortisol clearance, which throws off your internal clock. Without those disruptions, your body starts producing melatonin at the right time in the evening and cortisol at the right time in the morning. You feel alert during the day and naturally tired at night, the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so moving on to days 21 to 30. By the final week, the changes go beyond what you can feel. They are measurable 
in your blood work. Triglycerides drop significantly, and these are the fats in your blood that increase cardiovascular risk, and they're directly influenced by sugar intake. Lower triglycerides mean better heart health and reduced arterial inflammation. At the same time, HDL cholesterol, which is the protective kind, tends to rise slightly when sugar is removed. Your lipid profile shifts in a favorable direction, which long-term reduces your risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease. Your gut microbiome stabilizes even more during this period. The diversity of your bacteria in your intestines increases, with beneficial species increasing and bad ones decreasing. This shift improves digestion, nutrient absorption, and immune function. Around 70% of your immune system lives in your gut, so a healthier microbiome means a more resilient immune response overall. One of the most underrated benefits emerges at this point. Your taste buds reset. After 30 days without added sugar, naturally sweet foods like berries, carrots, even bell peppers taste intensely sweet. Ultra-processed foods taste artificial and overwhelming. Your palate recalibrates to prefer whole foods, which makes maintaining this way of eating much easier going forward. Your skin continues to improve as well. Sugar promotes glycation, which is a process where glucose molecules bind to collagen and elastin, making skin stiff and prone to wrinkles. It also triggers inflammatory pathways that worsen acne and rosacea. Within a month of cutting sugar, many people notice clearer skin, reduced breakouts, and a more even complexion. Visceral fat continues to decrease during this time as well. This is the dangerous fat stored around your organs and it's strongly linked to metabolic disease. Unlike subcutaneous fat, visceral fat is metabolically active. It releases inflammatory molecules and it disrupts your hormonal function. Losing it improves insulin sensitivity. It reduces inflammation and lowers your risk of chronic disease. So you feel lighter, sharper, and calmer. Not because you're dieting, but because your cells are finally working properly again. Your mitochondria, which are the energy factories inside every one of your cells, function more efficiently when they're not overwhelmed by constant glucose surges. You have more energy at baseline, not from stimulation, but from cellular health. So what happens after 30 days? Can you reintroduce sugar? Well, technically, yes, but your body's response will be different. If you eat something high in sugar after a month without it, you'll likely notice the effects much more acutely. Energy crashes, brain fog, even mild nausea. Your system has become sensitive again, which is actually a good sign. It means that you're no longer numb to sugar's impact. The real benefit isn't about never eating sugar again. It's about awareness. You know how your food affects your energy, your mood, and your focus. You can make informed choices instead of operating on autopilot. If you decide to have a dessert at a celebration, then that's fine, but you'll do it more consciously, knowing what to expect rather than being controlled by cravings. Long-term data supports sustained reduction in sugar intake. Populations that consume less than 10% of their daily calories from added sugar, which is roughly 50 grams or less, show significantly lower rates of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even Alzheimer's disease. The link between excess sugar and cognitive decline is increasingly clear. High glucose levels promote beta amyloid plaque formation in the brain, which is a hallmark of Alzheimer's pathology. You're also reducing your cancer risk. Many cancers are metabolically driven. Cancer cells preferentially use glucose for fuel and high insulin levels promote cell growth and division. So by keeping insulin low and stable, you create a metabolic environment that's less conducive to cancer development. This isn't about fear. It's about stacking odds in your favor. Small, consistent changes in how you eat compound over decades into dramatically different health outcomes. Cutting added sugar for 30 days isn't a quick fix. It's the beginning of a metabolic shift that extends both your lifespan and your health span. Here's what I want you to understand. Metabolic stability isn't just about health. It's about living well. You can't enjoy life fully 
when your energy is erratic and your brain is foggy. You can't be present with the people that you care about when you're constantly battling cravings and mood swings. Think about energy management like you'd think about managing your time or your money. You want predictability, not volatile swings. You want sustainability, not boom and bust cycles. Your metabolism works the same way. A stable glucose allows you to move throughout your day with clarity and purpose without constant disruption. People who understand this optimize their biology because they recognize that how you feel is downstream of physiology. You can have the best intentions in the world, but if your brain is foggy and your energy is crashing, you're fighting an uphill battle. Health isn't an optional upgrade. It's the foundation of everything else it's built on. Reframe cutting sugar from punishment to optimization. You're not depriving yourself, you're removing interference. You're clearing metabolic noise so your system can function the way it's designed to. This is precision medicine applied to everyday life. And it's not just about how you feel today, it's about longevity. If you want to be sharp, if you want to be energetic and functional into your 70s or 80s and beyond, then metabolic health is non-negotiable. The decisions you make today determine your cognitive and physical capacity decades from now. Cutting sugar for 30 days is a small investment with an outsized return. So let's summarize the timeline. Week one is withdrawal. Your body recalibrates dopamine, your microbiome shifts, and you feel a bit rough. Week two is stability. Blood glucose evens out, energy becomes consistent, and sleep improves. Week three is your brain resetting. Cravings fade, mood stabilizes, and mental clarity sharpens. Week four is systemic change. Inflammation drops, hormones balance, and you feel genuinely better at baseline. After just 30 days without sugar, you haven't just changed your diet, you've changed your metabolism, your focus, and your future risk of disease. That's what 30 days can do.